Well hello everyone. Yesterday we made a melon and pumpkin farm and today we are gonna make a bamboo sugarcane double combo mega jumbo farm. I'm gonna show you the place where I'm gonna build it or the so-called respective chunk. And it's exactly this place. I already cleaned it out a little bit and I've did some terraforming to the base area too. A little bit here and there. There were overall uh, some changes and you will uh, later see them all, for the most part. But I'm not gonna comment on everything. Expected that I broke the new mic. So that's gonna be the place and I'm not going to make it uh, the time-lapse style from the last vid. I want to try a lot of different things, uh, different styles and so on and so forth. So it's gonna be a little different from time to time. It's not gonna be exactly every time, but you will see it just later. Take it as me trying new stuff and experimenting a little bit. Well, that's how the item collection system is gonna look like from the bottom. Of course, I'm gonna switch up some things for a little bit the powered rails. This is still in progress, but I want to show you all a little bit from behind the scenes. Well, one of those things is, for example, onto redstone. We are gonna use an atypical block, so in the future when I'm mining around the area and I come across such a block, I know, yes, that's where I'm having redstone parts here and there. Right now I'm gonna finish up the pickup system, as you can see, and yeah, so a block, then I'm go up, place a redstone torch, and place a block on top. So right now I'm gonna use uh, two powered rails and that's gonna be more or less it. And you can always middle click onto other blocks so you can uh, just switch onto the block automatically. That's a little Minecraft trick most of people know already. Yep, and with this our pickup system is complete and I can show it to you again, no problem. So I'm gonna place a Minecraft with Hopper and I'm gonna choose for example this goal. I will, you can see the coal, I bump into it, it goes up automatically, it goes from the hopper to the comparator, the comparator is off normally, but when there's a hopper and it signals the item, it goes to the torch and from, to the redstone signal, so when the comparator doesn't get the signal, it knows that there are no items, but when it has signal, that means the hopper is active, there is a card with items and the items are going to the chest. So that's how the little uh, loop signal goes. And as you can see, the card comes back and it would stop there if it had any more items, but currently there are no items, so it's gonna go back onto the round, like a merry-go. Yeah. As you can see, it's going round and round, and that's how we make the pickup system automatically work. Well, it looks like I messed up a little bit. I wanted to have moss as the seed planting block for the bamboo and sugar cane, but I don't have any. So yeah, as you can see, there is no moss, no moss, no moss, and no moss. Well, then uh, there is no other way, so I've got to go on to a little magical journey. Well, <laughs> not sure if magical, but yeah, it's adventure time. Do you remember the pillar? This is the spawn chunk back there. I came from back down there. It's about 500 blocks or so, probably, maybe more. I don't really remember, but, 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 let me think. I found here, you would not believe it. It's crazy, like, look at this. Oh my god, man. This is like uh, the seed uh, Gemini Tay had in her single player world series where she got a crater oriented base and where she dug a tunnel and made uh, I think two sculptures right outside. Still I did not expect to find such an amazing find on my journey to find a little bit of moss, but uh, the funny thing is that we have a village right up there. I mean I'm not going to build a base here, but I'm still still have to admit that it's a gorgeous looking place with a lot of practicality like the village, the crater, the nether portal and so on. And uh, we're gonna add a few blocks from
from back there about 200 and right now voila what did we find and another crater with a gigantic aquifer or lake with a gigantic island in the middle i mean this is amazing i mean look there what a cave this looks like so epic I mean, come on, look, right up the cave, on the left side, up the mountain, there is an, another village. I mean, how crazy is it? What a perfect uh, location for a base. No, I mean, not for me. <laughs> but yes, I gotta say, it's great. It's like the old meme, get an ambulance, but not for me. And I've gone on to the other side of the village. I go on to the savanna, on to the Rocky Mountain, and what do we see back there? Badlands. So I can only hope that uh, there in the mineshaft I can find a little teeny bit of moss. I can only hope. I wish. Please, pretty please. Come on. Well then, let's go. Uh, it's slowly driving me crazy. I mean, I found the Badlands. I found a gigantic coral reef right next to them. I found some funny things, but I didn't find any teeny beeny bit of moss. I mean, I found some glowberries in the Badlands shaft, and right now I found these majestic mountains. These cool majestic mountains, which would be totally i mean totally the best background you could have on a minecraft world but still i cannot find one stinky bit of moss i mean it's driving me totally crazy guys and girls we found it we finally found it the most azalea bushes the trees. I mean, oh my god, come on, it was such a long journey. Here are the courts. I mean, I traveled over two and a half K diag uh, diagonally and then a little bit to the side. Okay, I can finally get it. Let's go meet up later at the base. Ah, well, here we are. Here we are. I finally got my moss. It only took like four or five hours to find it, but oh well. Well, as you can see... I've got a little bit of it with some azalea bushes and so on. Oh yeah, and by the way, I found some cacti on the way, so I made a little makeshift farm. I'm not totally sure if it's gonna be working, but I think yes, it should because of the fences. I was, or I am not too sure if it's gonna work this way, but it should be doable. I mean... I'm gonna look at it uh, through the building of the farm. So I used uh, the moss cause I wanted to use it as a soil based material. And then I placed uh, the stairs uh, such a way where it won't be leaking uh, downside. I mean, I could have used uh, just a block on side of them and just used a little bit of water through buckets. It would be like 100 times easier and faster because this method I used, it looks great, but it's gonna be covered up and yeah, I mean, it was not really worth it. <laughs> But whatever. Well, uh, the current project ain't it finished yet right now. I need to craft a lot more pistons and it's on a quite a good phase. I mean, it looks good and maybe I will make uh, the windows a little bit higher. One block. Yeah, I think uh, it, I will probably do that. It will look better. And guys and girls, don't forget, if you had a problem like I did here before, that the piston was extended and I didn't know why, it was because the redstone signal was extended through the block. So I had to switch it up for a glass block, because glass blocks in this game are functioning as a natural isolator. So it will isolate the signal, so it won't go through the block to the piston. So yeah, that's great. Well, on top of the pistons, I gave myself some cut copper blocks, cause I want to oxidize them like this, slowly but surely. I mean, it's a farm, so I just want to have it on the highest level of oxidation on top, I mean the copper blocks. And the iron for the pistons, I got them from the golems. Those slowly spawned next to the villagers, cause, you know, they're scared of the zombies and so. So yeah, you can say free real estate. Okay, that's more or less it, and now I'm going to put uh, the redstone on top of the copper blocks. 
Well, right now you can see this will be the system which will shut on and off the pistons. I'm gonna use two daylight detectors, one here and one there. Uh, one's gonna be on and one's gonna be off. Uh, two observers facing the way of the daylight sensors and we are more or less finished. Right now I only need to cover up the rest of it with glass and voila. <sighs> Good morning, my cutie pie. Well, right now I'm gonna show you how I got all my iron. So yeah, tap, 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 that up. And we are done. Yeah, I have no enchantments on the sword, so it's not the fastest thing in the world, but who doesn't like a little bit of suffering, right? I mean, we could have had a little bit more fun right now on the server if we had auto crafters on. I mean, I could have made an automatic smelter, automatic compressor for the bamboo and so on. Oh, hello, this guy here. He's the one who's making all the noise with the doors, but who knows? Not for long? <laughs> Well, the farm is more or less ready, I just want to decorate it a little bit like, well, like this and this, some bobs and pieces like this and probably last block here, yes. So we are finished, that's how the farm looks from the outside. And the top class makes it so that the crops won't grow higher than they need to be. As for the daylight detectors up there, they are set up like we've seen before, so everything is A-OK. -okay. And here I made some cute little windows and you can see later the copper and I can only hope that it will just nicely weather. And yeah, the farm as you can see is a little bit laggy, but that's cause there are a lot of pistons entities and moving parts. So you don't want to make too many of those uh, next to each other cause it can make or cause major uh, lag spikes. And later you can use a smaller design for the bamboo farm to use it uh, as a fuel source for the auto smelter. Which which I will probably make uh, later down the line. As for the two farms, I still plan to expand the storage on both of them for a little bit. Well, I'm mostly done for the most part and I will later add a crafting table and a light sauce. As you can see, it's uh, just some hoppers going right into the chests. As you can see, we've got some melons and pumpkins and at the other station it's almost the same. So yes, we're done. So guys and girls, if you ask yourself, Cracksor, what's gonna be next project on your agenda? Well, it's gonna be demolition. Cause who doesn't like our good old friend demolition? And what will you demolish, you ask? Well, it's gonna be the whole area. I'm going to destroy almost all of the houses, expect uh, one or two of them, and what I'm gonna build, you ask yourselves, it's gonna be villager trading hall plus an iron farm. Because you can see it is kinda annoying that they always uh, just run around and I just want to put them into a ditch or something, let them burn in lava. And a little bit later down the line I want to lay down some groundwork for where I'm gonna make the villager trading hall and probably a bit later the iron farm. Of course I want to make it a little bit automatic, so that means there's gonna be a zombie running around the area with a name tag on him. And then I'm gonna make a lever or something and, uh, before the villager and uh, they will just go down with a pulse extending with a piston and so. The zombie gonna auto path to them and just make them, you know, zombies. And I can just throw a potion of weakening and then a golden apple and voila, I've got lesser prices and better trading. It should be really similar to what Impulse SV made in the ninth season of Hermicraft. So yeah, that's more or less the plan for it. And as for the next few days for me, of course, I'm gonna do a lot of digging. 
and I still need to think about what kind of color palette I'm gonna make for the villager trading hall and there are some small problems around it so that's it for the meantime. Of course I'm gonna need a starting house or a starting area where I'm gonna just throw away the junk I have because I've got some chests but of course it's not enough. I mean 6-10 chests it's slowly beginning to look like a chest monster so I just want to be a little bit more organized so I'm gonna need to make an area for that. Of course killing the end dragon getting an elytra and getting tons of shulker boxes would help me immensely but I'm still not sure if I should go kill the dragon but I'm probably really thinking about that so yes and as for the cactus farm it's going well it's not the most efficient thing in the world but it's functioning I mean I can still upgrade it and make an hopper array all around it but oh well maybe I will do it a bit later and I did say or promised in the first episode that I want to make a little bit of small talk about anime and whatnot, but I'm probably thinking I'll make separate videos for it because it's a little bit uh, harder to focus on that when you're focusing on the farms, clearing out the area and so on. Plus it's a nightmare to edit. And I wanted to add uh, one more thing. I am using Optifine but I'm not using any other mod because I'm playing through the official client. I'm not using Gors Forge or whatever there is. That's why I can't make such epic montages like they do it on Hermitcraft because I don't have the access to the camera mod. I mean I could make it because I wanted to make it so it works but there is a problem because Optifine doesn't work on Curse Forge. I'm not sure how the folks at Hermicraft are doing it but well whatever. I'm not gonna dig that deep. Still I'm gonna need to make a general mob farm and this will still be a bit later down the line but it's gonna be a needed evil because I'm gonna need that uh, gunpowder when I am a little bit later going to get the elytra. You folks probably don't know but the nether spawn is uh, not really the worst one. I mean uh, let's go look at it. We spawned uh, directly in the crimson area and I just dug uh, right here as you can see a little bit a tunnel and because I was needing some quartz for the observers. I was lucky that the crimson had a lot of uh, the nylium shrooms because those are good to keep away the hawks and right at the end of the tunnel we've got a nylium forest. So I was quite happy, the warped, the you know this one. Still I did not see a fortress but I want to explore the nether a little bit more but it's gonna need to wait till I get an elytra so I've got yeah uh, the freedom of the wings. So yeah of course I'm gonna try to get it in the next episode. Oh yeah and we finished the farm so we have to make this and a little bit star here and a little star here and we're done. As for the next farm I'm gonna build it's probably gonna be a bee farm because I'm gonna need those honey blocks. They are used in a lot of contraptions of the redstone variety so yes that's uh, it what I'm gonna need. As for the wood types I got quite lucky and on the expedition earlier I got all the saplings I'm gonna need expect the newest mangrove types which I'm really want to get cause I really like it. the wood type and the color. Well guys and girls I wanted to do uh, some archaeology but I didn't know how to craft a brush so here we go. We need a feather, a copper ingot and a stick for that. Ah, I'm like so pissed off right now. I'm in a shipwreck cause I wanted to do some archaeology and of course I need to go to the oceans. So yes, I opened two chests, this one and 
you probably won't believe but you will yes this one with moss of course so yeah the previous uh, two or three hour journey was <laughs> like a joke but at the very least i got some of the wood types and i explored the area a bit but still i did not expect that but man i'm so pissed off <laughs> oh god well whatever well the thing is i always thought that finding uh, one single azalea tree about the ground is a lot easier than just going around looking for shipwrecks and so on to get the moss but at the very least i found most of the wood types so at the very least that's a dub well and then 15 seconds later as you can see about 800 blocks from the village yep there was a monument well i'm gonna try look here for some suspicious sand but well let's see and in the end i did not find a thing but i did found two maps so yeah we're gonna look for treasure and as for where i found the two maps one was in the sunken ship and the second one was in the ruins so yeah no suspicious sand sadly and there are two ways to dig for the treasure when we got the map the first way is to go straight to the x and try to position your behind and between the x straight in the middle so that a little bit of the white is going away or the second way is to press f3 and look if you are in the 99 quarter so yeah that's the way and after that you just dig straight down till you get the treasure and lo and behold we got a heart of the sea let's go wait a minute isn't it my yeah that's the backside of the mountain i mean of the village i live oh my god it's like yeah do you see here i made some sand so yes i'm really <laughs> go i'm just like 200 blocks away from the village and villagers i have nice <laughs> we've gone full circle on my way to the second treasure map I found this here. This should be the trial ruins that I was looking for, for the archaeology. I mean I'm gonna loot it a little bit later, the whole stuff. And right now I have enough on my hands with all those drowned. I mean come on, that's a full horde. But yeah, here should I find some suspicious sand and get some artifacts but I have my inventory full so I cannot really loot it. But we found a suspicious gravel so I can use the brush we crafted earlier and with a right click we got a piece. So yes, but as you can see no inventory but we've got a pottery shard. And with right clicking we can just check if something is or isn't suspicious. The same thing we can do with F3 but that would be a little bit boring. Well, I'm gonna mark this location and check it out a bit later when I have an elytra and shulker boxes. You know what's funny? The first ruins I saw, the Tronon Temple, and here I found a suspicious terracotta, so I just found this, did a right click and there was a suspicious gravel right here, as you can see the candle. A little bit later I dug down a little bit and made a chest but it was a whole trial chamber so I just talked to myself I'm gonna do it a little bit later so yeah I had no more you know energy for that and as you can guess what I found right next to the second trash map yep a village so I'm gonna check this out it should be probably somewhere close here and there we go again we've got a second third of the sea great and some water breathing potions nice and we are again back here i'm gonna dig a bit as you can see i placed me a double chest and let's see what we can get and about 10 or so minutes in the end we've got only this yep just garbage but probably a bit later if i go through the whole ruins i can get some shards or maybe some trims well then let's go home at the very least some villagers and a chest monster. So this is the view of the village before the destruction and the terraforming. 
and this is the view after the destruction. I left two houses cause one of them houses my librarian and the second one is part of the wall, so yeah. Guess who fell down the ladder? Of course it's me! Well, I'm not a builder or an average builder or a great builder, I'm an under average builder. So yes, this is the groundwork for the villager trading hall. I'm gonna make it uh, functioning, I want to have a zombie that's going around and with a lever I'm just gonna push the villagers up or down so they can be zombified really fast to get their prices right. And after that, well, who knows, but that's gonna be for a bit later, cause firstly I'm gonna get an elytra wings and city and so on. So that's gonna be my first agenda. Why are you focusing on the nether portal and why are you focusing on the piglin, where Zoglin? Well, it's not cause I want to, but cause I want to make a little status update on the groundwork. So yes, I did a bit terraforming and this is the rough sketch of how it's gonna look like. I mean, just the groundwork, but yes, I did this. It's gonna be like a Colosseum with some chains, but of course it's not gonna look great or even good. But yeah, don't expect much from me, please. I mean, I still gotta find a suitable block palette and color palette and how I'm gonna build it, decorate it and so on. I got no idea, for real, for real. Well then, I'm gonna see you all in the next episode.